Okay, so we're going to go into, this is February 2021 and also April 2022. Describe the principle of operation of a simple hydraulic governor. Describe the principle of operation of a simple hydraulic governor. Simple hydraulic governor's principle of operation. A simple hydraulic governor is a mechanical a device that utilizes hydraulic principles to regulate the speed of an engine, typically a diesel engine. Here's how it works. The components are flyweights, governor shaft, sleeve and control lever, a diaphragm and spring, fuel control valve, and hydraulic oil chamber and piston. The flyweights, these are rotating masses driven by the engine's crankshaft. As the engine speed increases, the flyweights tend to spread out towards uh, outwards due to centrifugal force. Yeah, they're like two balls on the end of a, uh, a, a bar, right? Uh, they come all the way from steam engines. Uh, governor shaft, connected to the flyweights, the shaft rotates with the engine. Connected to the flyweights, this shaft rotates uh, with the engine. Governor shaft, oh, it looks like main shaft. Um, uh, the governor shaft so is a control sh control shaft. Sleeve and control lever. This sleeve slides on the governor shaft and is connected to the control lever. Diaphragm and spring. A spring loaded diaphragm separates the high pressure side of the fuel system from the low pressure chamber. Fuel control valve. This valve regulates the flow of fuel to the engine. A hydraulic oil chamber and piston. Uh, connected to the control lever, a piston operates within a chamber filled with hydraulic oil. Operation. How does it all work? We've got one, two, three, four points. We, we're talking about the engine speed increase and then control lever movement and then fuel pressure regulation and speed regulation. So engine speed increase. As the engine speed increases, the flyweight spread out, pushing the governor shaft and the sleeve along with them. Control lever movement. The movement of the sleeve actuates the control lever, which pushes against the diaphragm. Fuel pressure regulation. By pushing against the diaphragm, the control lever opens the connection between the high pressure fuel line and the low pressure chamber. This allows some of the high pressure fuel to bypass the engine, reducing the overall fuel reaching the cylinders, consequently slowing down the engine. So it bypasses it, so it passes it another way. So not so much fuel goes into the engine, which slows the whole thing down. Speed regulation. As the engine slows down, the flyweights move back inwards due to reduced centrifugal force. This allows the spring and the diaphragm assembly to push back on the control lever, closing the bypass passage, allowing more of the fuel to reach the engine, bringing the engine speed back up again. Essentially, the hydraulic governor acts like a feedback loop. If you have increased engine speed, this causes the flyweights to move out further. This can causes the control lever to open up the bypass, so less fuel goes into the engine, which uh, causes engine speeds to decrease. Or we can say the other way, which is decreased engine speed leads to the flyweights moving inwards. The control lever closes the bypass. So more fuel enters the engine, so engine speed increases. By adjusting the spring tension or the position of the flyweights, the governor's set points are de for desired engine speed can be fine-tuned. This ensures the engine maintains a relatively constant speed under varying loads. Additional notes. In some designs, the hydraulic oil chamber and piston might be replaced by a simpler mechanical linkage, achieving the same uh, principle of regulating fuel fuel flow based on governor shaft movement. Modern governors may incorporate electronic controls and more precise, more precise speed regulation and integration with the engine management systems. So that was describe the principle of operation of a simple hydraulic governor with 10 marks. So a lot of detail. Okay, February 2022. Explain with the aid of labeled sketches how a scroll type fuel pump meters the fuel for high and low loads. Oh, scroll type fuel pump. We've seen a scroll type fuel pump for injectors. So we're gonna see it again here. A scroll type is basically like a screw inside of a housing, I reckon. Explain with the aid of labeled sketches. Well, I haven't got a sketch, so I'm gonna explain what should be in the sketch. Uh, it's quite a lot as usual. So. Uh, scroll type fuel pumps are positive displacement pumps co commonly used in large diesel engines, particularly marine, for marine applications. They offer a simple yet efficient method of metering fuel based on engine loads. Their components are a spiral groove, 
that's the scroll, the rotor, the cam follower, inlet port, and outlet port. The spiral groove, which is the scroll, uh, this is a helical groove, like DNA helical, uh, machined into the inner surface of the pump housing. Yeah, so it's like a screw and it's gonna spin. They call it a scroll, why do they call it a screw? Rotor, uh, a spool-shaped rotor, spool-shaped rotor, with a tight, with a tight fit inside the scroll, has an eccentrically positioned cam follower pin. Oh, maybe I'm getting those backwards then. Spiral groove, scroll might be the outside, and the rotor might be the screw that goes inside of it. Might get those backwards, yeah. Cam follower, this pin rides inside the groove on a drive sleeve connected to the engine. Inlet port, located at the base of the scroll where the fuel enters the pump. Outlet port is located at the top of the scroll where the fuel exits the pumps towards the engine's injectors. The metering mechanism, uh, you can do this two different ways. You can do it via the rotation or the eccentricity, eccentricity effect. Why is it called eccentricity? In, is in the center, but why are people eccentric then if they're like strange? That's weird. Rotation. Uh, the drive sleeve rotates the, dr the rotor with the scroll housing. All right. And the eccentricity effect is due to the eccentric cam follower pin, the rotor doesn't rotate perfectly the rotor doesn't rotate perfectly centered within the scroll. This creates a varying volume between the rotor and the scroll during each revolution. Don't know about that. All right, part A. Explain with the aid of sketches how a scroll type pump meters fuel. So apparently it does it over high loads and low loads. So high loads, large pockets. As the rotor rotates at the high en at high engine load, Eccentric position, the eccentric position allows for the formation of larger pockets between the rotor and the scroll. You get more fuel delivery. During each rotation, these larger pockets fill completely with fuel on the inlet side and are carried towards the outlet on the discharge side. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so just get larger pockets of fuel. This results in a higher volume of fuel uh, being delivered per revolution, satisfying the increased fuel demand at high engine loads. At low load, smaller pockets. At low engine load, the cam follow p position creates smaller pockets between the rotor and the scroll. Less fuel delivery. Uh, these smaller pockets with less fuel during each rotation resulting in a lower overall volume of fuel delivery per revolution, matching the reduced fuel requirement at low engine loads. So what are you saying? It, does it actually physically change the shape of the screw? So like you have a more open screw and a more closed screw and a more open screw de de delivers higher load. Could be that, couldn't it? I have to see a diagram of it. Uh, key points. The pump doesn't have an external mechanism for act actively controlling fuel flow. The varying volume pockets created by the rotor's is eccentric movement achieve this metering. Engine speeds remain relatively constant uh, and the varying fuel delivery based on load is achieved by the scroll's pump internal design. In additional notes, the specific shape of the dimensions of the scroll and rotor profile determine the pump's performance characteristics and the fuel delivery curve. Modern scroll pumps might incorporate control mechanisms for additional adjustments or integration with electronic uh, engine management systems. Scroll type pump, let's look at one up, let's see what it looks like. Scroll type pump, fuel pump, I suppose. Oh yeah, it's that kind of pump. And it does wiggle around. Hmm, there it is. Drive pulley fan, crankshaft, fixed scroll. Hmm. I've got a diagram. So we can find a picture online. Yeah, pretty good. Scroll vacuum pump. I don't get how it changes there. Never mind. Look at next one. Next question is January 2023. Is sketch a scroll type fuel pump labeling the main components? Explain and part B, that's worth six marks. Part B is explain how the pump sketched in the previous part may vary the end delivery. So same kind of question, just rewording. A lot of this paper is like that, uh, or most of the papers are like this, is that they just reword the same type of questions. 
the same content but in different uh, different ways of asking it basically so the label sketch should include a scroll housing houses the spiral groove or the scroll spiral groove or the scroll the helical groove uh, machined inside the housing a rotor sp spool shaped rotor with a tight fit inside the scroll eccentric cam follower pin off center pin of the rotor cam follower groove groove on the drive sleeve where the pin rides drive sleeve connected to the engine rot rotates the rotor an inlet valve where the fuel enters the pump an outlet port sorry inlet port outlet port where the fuel exits towards the engine injectors that should be the sketch and explain how it works uh, or explain how the pump sketch may vary the end delivery so how does it regulate fuel delivery varying end delivery the scroll type fuel pump sketched in the part a doesn't directly control the end of delivery the injection timing hmm. the injection i'm not sure about that or the fuel fuel injection timing is typically controlled by a separate mechanism uh, within there within the engine's fuel injection system uh, the f scroll pumps function is to meter the fuel quantity yes this is what we said is how does it vary the end delivery in quantity rather than timing um, so the scrolls pump function is to meter the fuel quantity delivered to the engine per per engine cycle based on load. He, so it puts more fuel into the engine when you're under load and less when you're not under load. Here's how the pump design indirectly affects the end of delivery. The end of delivery. Ugh, that's kind of bad. Here's how the pump indirectly affects how much fuel is injected into the engine. High load. As previously explained, larger pockets form at high load delivering more fuel per pump revolution. This increased volume of fuel available for injection during the injection window controlled by a separate injection timing mechanism. Yeah, so when you're under high load, you inject more fuel. Under low load, you inject less fuel. Smaller pockets deliver less fuel per revolution, reducing the amount of fuel available for injection during the same injection window. So it's all about the, the size uh, per, uh, per rotation in the timing. In, in essence, the scroll type in essence, the scroll pump indirectly influences the end delivery by providing a variable fuel quantity based on load, which can then be injected at appropriate time determined by the injection timing control system. Yeah, but it doesn't exactly say. I still don't understand how does it actually control uh, the quantity. Uh, you just put on a lever and it makes it bigger or something, something along those lines. I'll have to look it up a little bit. Um, something like wiggling inside of there is going to cause it to Im increase the amount of fuel being injected each time. But not quite sure just yet.